So hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today's event. Welcome to the fifth part of our seven part construction webinar series that covers some of the top challenges that construction as well as building material companies face and then the solutions that NetSuite and Efficiencies Construction Solution provide to solve those key issues. So today we'll cover the topic of change orders. So we'll focus on how NetSuite combined with Efficiencies Construction Solution solves key challenges faced by these companies regarding change orders. So to start, my name is Clara Sabo and I'll be kicking off the event for today. I'm a marketing specialist here at Efficiency in charge of running webinars and various marketing initiatives. I have with me today, Johnny Than, our principal and CEO at Efficiency, Morteza Hoseni, who is our director of delivery and a seasoned construction expert, and Joyce Sue, who is a senior product engineer here at Efficiency. So for those of you that are not familiar, NetSuite is the first cloud ERP founded over 20 years ago. They have more than 29,000 customers in more than 200 countries across the globe. And also to introduce Efficiency, who provides NetSuite consulting, implementation, and integration services. Efficiency has several construction solutions and has worked with clients in the land developer, general contractor, subcontractor, and engineering design service space. We've also recently been awarded the NetSuite Construction Alliance Partner Spotlight Award for our work in the construction industry. So just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Today's event is being recorded. All lines will be muted and we'll leave time for questions at the end as per usual. So please feel free to submit them in the chat throughout and we'll be sure to get to them. So to get started, I'll first be going over the agenda for today's event. So we'll first have introductions, then we'll have a presentation of an overview of change orders. Then we'll have a 30 minute product demo and then we'll end off with some time for Q&A. So I'll now hand it over to Johnny Than, Principal and CEO at Efficiency for introductions and our presentation. Thank you very much, Clara. I'm excited to be a co-host here today with you all. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, I started the Efficiency uh, Incorporated group of companies uh, over eight years ago and I have uh, over 14 years of technology experience on the NetSuite platform itself, uh, over 20 years in ERP and project consulting, as well as over 25 years across various IT plat platforms um, and various IT uh, manifestations. I'm excited to lend my experience and uh, work with uh, my esteemed colleagues and co-hosts here, Morteza, to help you guys understand and be benefit from uh, what change orders might look like on a NetSuite platform for construction. Thanks, Clara. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Morteza Hosseini here. I'm the director of delivery. Excited to um, be part of this session with you guys today. Um, in terms of background, um, I'm a civil engineer, work uh, in construction project for 14 years, and then uh, decided to help over 350 construction companies implementing ERP solution and uh, yeah, um, looking forward to the session. Thanks very much, Merteza. Um, we will be uh, potentially joined in our Q&A as well by Hamid Ishfaq and I'd like to welcome him at that time, but uh, Hamid is that uh, we'd like to, uh, to the session. Um, when we look at the market for construction, um, one of the things that makes it a little bit unique compared to many of the other software industry uh, targets is really that construction is still in very early phase. If you look at the very first sort of green square uh, cell on this banner, you'll see that the global construction industry is 13% of global GDP, a significant proportion of all corporations are either in construction, are in allied services around the construction space, or directly driven by construction-like requirements. And this group of corporations and companies is only seeing low, is seeing low productivity gains. Being in a mature sector, you'd expect lots of software options. And the reality is, is that there's not. 
With the world growing at around 3%, construction industries have about 50 to 60% productivity gains to be had year over year, should they so choose to take them. And the efficiency solution is hopefully, along with the NetSuite Oracle platform, the first of its kind to really give them that option. This is a construction, um, the construction software market is growing leaps and bounds. You can see a CAGR of 8.3%, uh, but really uh, fundamentally currently underpinned by many, uh, many software organizations and software options that are uh, depicted and characterized by focusing on a specific part of the value chain. The, the NetSuite Oracle efficiency solution focuses on the entire value chain through all the way from basic bid uh, all the way through to cash delivery and closed projects. And this market is uh, driven highly by all of the many demands for construction projects. Of course, with all the infrastructure spending that we've seen headlines throughout the, um, throughout the COVID pandemic, uh, this is even more true. Next slide, please. So today what we'd like to do is really get into um, to, and talk about what change orders are and why are change orders unique to construction. Um, so, Marteza, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you, as, as our industry expert, you know, what is so unique about change orders in construction? Every industry has change orders to some level. So, uh, I would say the importance of change order in uh, construction specifically is uh, the integration that needs to happen. Uh, within the different areas of the project. So um, a simple change or a start with, you know, um, considering the change in the scope of the project. But the reality is that would impact the cost, the revenue, the uh, some of the contract that you might have with your subcontractors, additional resources. And um, this simply will require lots of uh, coordination and management uh, as soon as you face into a change order. And of course, lots of communication, justification around why, why we need to have this change order and, uh, and so on. So um, in a typical project, um, it's, it's completely normal to have over 30 change orders. Uh, you might not see that you know, quite often in other industries, but um, this is just construction. I see. So so construction looks at change order not just as a necessary evil, but as a normal part of operations. And, and, and they look for change orders to flow through, uh, to have their effect flow through the value chain. Um, in that case, let me ask you then more broadly, if that's the case for change orders being so endemic or so intricately intertwined to the entire uh, value chain process for a construction, what is unique about the NetSuite or an efficiency platform? What, what would make it preferred for this industry? Um, yeah, so to me, I, I think uh, when you look at different companies, um, and this is just me uh, wearing my construction hat. You see different people, they manage their change orders in different ways. And um, what we did at efficiency, we designed the change order on NetSuite platform based on the best practices. As I mentioned, uh, change order um, had lots of different impact from um, different angles of the project. And even later on, if you think about it, this change order would impact your accounting side of the business as well. So um, that's the main reason that uh, when you design a change order, you need to understand, okay, um, there should be an interaction with your uh, resource allocation. Uh, the the cost, the revenue, the impact on your schedule of value. Now the scope of the project, the budget that you have now, you know, expanding, and uh, this would impact your person completion at the project level. Um, and of course, even your forecast uh, depends where you are with the change order. So um, there are lots of different uh, aspects that needs to be considered. 
And I think um, that's the part that uh, I will focus on the efficiency and why efficiency. Um, NetSuite also uh, would provide the foundation that we need, right? So the foundation should be there, then you can design the structure. So that's um, why I would say NetSuite and efficiency would uh, be the preferred factor. Got it. So in that world, when we, you know, I came from one of the largest CRM software companies in the world, and uh, and I saw Best of Breed. When I look at how does uh, a change order get tracked, there's a heavy duty CRM component to it really as well. Um, and of course, a good CRM needs a good workflow. Uh, and guess what? The NetSuite Efficiency Platform has one of the best workflows in the business, one of the first full-blown ERP point and click configure type workflows uh, ever created um, by one of the geniuses of, of our generation in uh, Goldberg. So it's really interesting to see how you can use the NetSuite functions to track change order, to track any uh, customer interaction, client interaction, and arm's length interaction where you're interacting with folks that are maybe one, uh, one degree of separation removed from your direct client. Um, so when, when, when I put all of the, that CRM capability to task for a change order, I, I see how it can be highly valuable uh, to the, the change order process where there's a lot of back and forth, there's a lot of change of numbers. Um, being able to track all that would be really, really critical. Um, what would you say uh, is, is probably the, the thing that you're looking for the most if you have all this great customer management, relationship management, event and activity management, along with the workflow engine, what would you say is the most important thing to really track uh, for a business uh, that's, uh, that's going through multiple change orders? So um, to me, if you think about how we get to a point that we have an approved change order from the owner in our hand, in order to get into that point, um, you need to follow um, different I would say a communication channel. And even the path of getting to that point might be different within the same project. So with one specific uh, scenario, you might start and initiate a change order because of an RFI that initiated from your uh, vendor, then go to a proposed change order. Now having all the fun conversation with architect, with customer, with your subcontractor, get another supplier maybe involved. And then now you, suddenly you have your owner change order. Or it could be as easy as, hey, customer just initiated this thought of changing something in the school. So they would give you a CCN turn to PCO, turn to change order. So in practice, if you think about how you get to that point, you might have up to 30, 40 different conversation back and forth with different people. So at any point of time as a project manager, the question for you is when I'm going to get that approved change or a sign in my hand. And now, what I can see with the NetSuite platform, as you mentioned, Johnny, um, it, it's a great tool. The notes, all the communication, all the uh, steps, even the approval that needs to happen, and this is not a simple thing to have with um, many, many other platforms. Uh, many of them, you would just, you know, have a screen to enter your numbers, the communication part, the, the follow-up, nothing would happen compared to here that you can even uh, set up your communication role, then everything can automatically, uh, you know, uh, get tracked. Well, a project without communication is a project that is dead, right? So, um, in a in a in a world where you have all these change orders, you're you're tracking a lot of activity against it. Um, you know, what else would you say is uh, important to the industry 
uh, for change orders and, and how they impact commercials. I, I haven't heard enough of that. I get that they're endemic. I get that they're intricately involved in all parts of the value chain, but but what else is is critical here? So um, that that's a very good question, Jenny. And uh, I can tell you, think about it as a mini project. Change order by itself is a mini project. In that project, you have costs to be managed and you have revenue to be earned. And the difference between the two would define your margin. Of course, if your cost is more than your revenue, then you are going to lose money on that mini project, which you don't want. So in terms of the commercial, it's very important if you, you agree on a number with your customer, which would define your revenue, which would now later has to be part of your progress bill, needs to be um, on your AR invoice to the customer. Now, think about the cost side. Make sure that you cover um, your margin and it's not going to be impacted negatively by having poor, um, I would say, negotiation for a contract that you put in place. So on the commercial side, not only you need to um, take a look on the revenue, but also uh, to the cost. And most of the companies, they actually start with estimating their cost, similar to a project, add their markup, their fee, and then say, hey, customer, you want this change? This is our price. And we go from there. And there are some other specific to um, elements to the change order, such as retaining right? Um, as I mentioned, now that you have a change order, that would also impact your original budget. Ultimately, it would impact your job cost report because you can't just assume that whatever you had at the beginning of the project is, uh, is the right number. So as soon as you receive an approved change order from the customer, now all the report needs to be updated. You need to uh, take care of the cost portion, which most of the time you deal with the, your vendors and then, of course, the customer. So that's how I can um, elaborate on that. So funny enough, we up to here, we had different webinar covered whatever I um, mentioned. Like we had webinar three, talked about retainage. We talked about progress billing in webinar four and a schedule of value in webinar two. And the focus on those webinars was on the project. That's why exactly I said, look at the chain order as mini projects. This can be you know, related to um, those items that we already discussed. Got it. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Marteza. I appreciate that great answer. Uh, for folks that are not so familiar, um, with how to track these different uh, details and how work codes interact with change orders. You can see here um, that a change order also feeds into, uh, well, like, like Martinez said, the mini project where the estimate and feeds into the general overall progress to the ABC record uh, and ultimately to customer billing. Lastly, I just wanted to show you what a screenshot looks like when you have multiple, multiple change orders on a project. It's really valuable to be able to have a platform that can present the information in any way you like. What you see here is one, one version presented by uh, cost codes or work codes, uh, item codes if you like. Another one at the divisional code level. Uh, both can be done either landscape or uh, portrait, depending on the orientation and how many change orders you expect to deal with on each project. I think that these provide the basis now, uh, and this Q&A session uh, was, was excellent for my learning, so we can all better understand why change orders are important in the industry, but also more importantly, what does the software need to actually be able to do to support it? And so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Joyce Liu, who's gonna do our product demo. She's one of our senior product engineers, uh, comes from one of the best schools uh, that Canada can offer, and uh, really provides a lot of great product development and engineering background. Uh, it's wonderful to see her do a demonstration of what change orders will look like on the uh, Oracle NetSuite and Efficiency platform. Thanks, Johnny and Morteza. Over to Joyce now. 
Thanks for the overview, Johnny, Marquesa, and Hamid. Hi, everyone. Nice to have you all in this webinar. So in the last few webinars of the series, we've seen how AppFitchency's construction solution and Nestwe serves different aspects of the construction industry. In the estimating webinar, we've seen how the work specified on the estimate can be synchronized to the project and facilitates the creation of schedule values. In the retainage webinar, we've seen how to withhold and release retainage on the customer side and on the subcontractor side. In the most recent webinar, progress billing, we've seen how efficiency, efficiency solution allows you to invoice fixed price and cost plus contract in Nestle. Today's webinar will be about change orders, where we're going to look at some of the common types of the change order and some of the propagating effects of change orders in the ERP system. These effects include changes to the drop budget, changes to the actual cost, actual revenue, changes in the billing, as well as subcontractor change order that's, result, that's resulted from owner change order. So with that being said, let's dive into it. So here I have the same sports stadium project that we've been working on uh, throughout this series. And this project is on the project record. So there's a lot of information here. Usually, um, day, usually day to day, I would go to the project dashboard because the project dashboard provides me with high level information I need on a day to day level. I usually go back to the project when I want to drill down to any specific information. And I was able to access the project dashboard by clicking on this icon. This project dashboard shows me the different high level information regarding the project. For example, it shows me reminders on things to do for the project. It shows me the change order log some of the different change orders, as well as their cost, and then cost and revenue reporting. So these are the layouts I like to have on my project dashboard because it, it, is, uh, it allows me to be more efficient at my work. And these layouts are common for all my projects. And this is because I, I like to have the same layout for different projects. On another project, the layout will be the same. The reminder will be at the top left. Change order log will be at the top right. The only difference are the information because this project dashboard only shows relevant information for this sports stadium project. So let's take a look at what this project dashboard covers. So on the reminder tab, it shows me the different pending change order that I need to follow up. By clicking on this link, it shows me the five PCOs. And then as I complete the PCOs, the file is going to get reduced to a lower number. So the reminders get updated as I complete the work. To the right, there's this change order log, which shows me to approve change orders and change orders that's going to wrap up. Lower down, there's this change order cost, which shows me the internal change order and external change order, as well as how much is in each kind of change order and for what type of work. The internal change order in the construction industry are any change orders that we don't show the customer. And external change orders are the change orders that we show the customer. In this webinar, we'll be covering both examples. To the right, there's also cost reporting. So this shows me the cost of the project at, for different types of work, as well as the different types of cost. For example, it shows me the original cost budget, which is the cost that's specified on my initial contract. And it also shows me the, the cumulative change orders I have for both internal and external. We covered the initial contract and our first change order in the estimating webinar. So it will be good to take a look if you want to know what happened there. 
to the right, it shows me the updated cost budget, which is the sum of the original budget plus change orders. And then it also shows me the committed cost, which is the cost from the confirmed contract I had with my subs. The actual cost is the actual uh, amount my sub has invoiced me for different types of work. The outstanding commitment is the difference between the actual cost and the commit, commit, committed cost, which shows what's outstanding for this type of work. Because my project is still in the early to middle stage, uh, we don't have some of the com committed uh, co confirmed contract yet. And then at the very right, there's the remaining budget, which shows me how much uh, cost or leftover do I have remaining. And you can see that for sanitary sewage, there's, there's where I don't have any money remaining and I have to be extra careful in order not to not overburn. Hopefully there's no change orders for this type of work. Or if there's change order, I hope I can be paid for it. At the bottom, there's the project revenue reporting. So similar to cost, the revenue reporting is broken down to different type of work. And then it shows the original contract, the change order on the revenue side, as well as the current estimate. And then it also shows me the actual revenue. The actual revenue is the amount that I have invoiced the customer for this type of work. And we covered the actual revenue in the progress billing webinar, where we invoice the customer for these type of work. And below you can see the cumulative total on uh, overall project level. Below, there's also the Gantt chart, which shows me the project plan as well as the timeline. So this is what the project dashboard looks like. Now let's take a look at the different change orders. So I'm just going to click on the eye icon, which will lead me to the change to change order number two. This is really this dashboard is really handy because you can see the change orders is only one click away. Um, the project reporting and costing is also just one click away. So this change order is a result of uh, owner's request. So let's take a look at the communication to see what happened. So uh, essentially the owner has asked for some additional roofing work that's out of the scope from the initial contract. And so they initiated a change request and then I met with the owner to discuss their new requirements and what they needed to add. And then I was working with the architect to finalize the design. After the owner and architect signed off on the requirement and design, I issued an RFQ to get some quotes from my subs. After the RFQ has closed, I picked the sub and then I updated the cost and price based on the subs quote. So this activity shows me the different activities I've done for this change order. For example, phone calls, tasks, um, and events. What's really handy in NetSuite is that for these uh, activities and communications, I can store crucial information. Like even just for the phone call, I can store uh, the message as well as the file of the proposed or sample design. And then it also shows me the date of when the discussion happened. This is, this is really handy because, it, because a change order often includes a lot of communication between the owner, architect, me, and then the subs. By having all the communication in one place, it, it's, it's a really good uh, backward it gives a really good backward, got backward look in, in case I need to review something or in case, um, in case I forgot something. These uh, these events and phone calls are activities within a suite. Um, however, we can also have integration to Google Calendar or G Suite, 
so that um, the event on calendar can also be uh, also be linked in a suite and be linked to a particular change order. Another cool thing about these activities and tasks is that they also show up on my personal dashboard when I first log in. So I want, when I first log into NetSuite, I'll be able to see the different tasks I needed to do, uh, what change order it's for, and then whether they are completed. And that's really, really helpful to keep me in, keep me on track with regarding to the different follow-up communication and to-dos with regarding to the change order. To the right of the activity, there's files. So a Nestle allows me to link the blueprint design and material regarding this roof. That way um, I can review what are the files, that way I can uh, store what are the files I review with the owner and then share them with the sub once, um, the, uh, once I pick the sub. And then I was also able to add some high level user notes so that um, they, are, they are like a to do for myself. And this is really helpful because I can organize these information separately and then uh, review them when needed. Another cool thing about these activities and communications is that these are shared with my colleagues in the sense that in the sense that these activities are viewable by people with the right roles and permissions and so when i'm away my colleague can also see what what are the tasks that are done what are the phone calls that have already been made and what's left remaining so we issued an rfq to the subs and rfq is also within that suite and so we just we just created an RFQ in a suite and then uh, got the bid and then closed the bid after we and closed the bid. So our sub told us that the new roofing would cost around twenty five uh, twenty four k. And so I emailed my internal team um, to align with the PCO that we're going to quote the quote the owner. So essentially, I updated. So based on the subs, subs quotes, I updated the cost amount, added a markup, and then have a overall billing revenue. And then I emailed my team so that we're aligned on what we should send to the owner. And then I sent this to my team in NetSuite. My team re re received the email in Outlook and they replied in Outlook. However, um, NetSuite was able to capture my team made response, which you can see here, and where I am the primary recipient. So after my team's aligned, I sent this uh, proposed change order to the owner. And I also attached the change order PDF. So as you can see, this shows the proposed change order, uh, the, what the work is for, the cost, markup, and then the final price. So this is what change order number one looks like. Let's go back to the project dashboard and take a look at uh, change order number two, actually change order number three, but it's the second change order we're gonna review today. So this change order, it, this change order was uh, a result of one of our subs RFI. So while performing the work, our sub realizes that the architect's blueprint was missing some of the key outlet that needs to be installed. And so they sent an RFI to clarify this with us. They told us that the current design does not support the equipment and activities we want the stadium to, to be able to contain. And so they're recommending to have some additional outlet. They have also estimated the additional cost. It would need additional cost for these outlet as well as um, any changes in project days. We replied to our sub that we're gonna discuss with this owner and um, get back to them. So 
we reviewed the we reviewed this with the owner, and the owner agreed that、um, this is additional work, and they also signed off on having these additional outlets. So we worked with the owner's architect again to revise the blueprint, and then we got and then we. Confirmed on the price with our, we confirmed the price with our sub. So once our sub confirmed on the price,、uh, we updated this proposed change order, and then updated the markup and the revenue. After updating the cost and revenue, we emailed the owner the proposed change order to show them. Uh, how much this change is going to cost? Because this is a change order that's initiated by the sub. By the sub, in addition to sending them the proposed change order document, we have also attached the sub RFI document that they sent us. This is really handy because you can see that the sub RFI is already attached to this change order as a file. And so, sending it and attaching it is really easy. So this is、um, this is the second change order that we're covering today. The third type of change order、um, is a little different. So the first two types of change order are external change order, where we show it to the customer. Whereas for the third type of for, for the third change order, we're going to review. It's an internal change order. As you can see,、um, the revenue amount is zero. So this internal change order happens because、um, we missed out on some of the work when we're、uh, creating our bid, and now we realize these work needs to be performed. But because this is a fixed price contract, we cannot invoice the customer for them, and so we have to eat the cost up ourselves. We are going to create like an internal change order. And a subcontractor change order, so that our sub can perform the work. But this work is not billable to the client, and so the revenue is zero. So these are the three types of changes. These are the three types of change orders. I can click on any of the change orders. I can click on the work code PDF to show to show me the four different change orders I have in the system already. So this change order PDF shows me the different schedule of values, as well as、um, the different changes to the schedule of values each of the change order is going to have. And it also shows me the updated schedule schedule values as a result of the different change order and initial contract. This is helpful because it gives me like a detailed and backward view to know what caused my schedule value to change, which change order,、uh, ch which change order、uh, changed the value. So.、Um, The the owner has signed off on the quotes as well as the work for the two external change orders. I'm just going to approve these pending change orders and convert them into one sales contract. Our owner prefers to re receive one change order PDF to PDF to include all the change order price at once. So I'm just going to combine them into one sales contract. So I have just converted the two pending change order into one single sales contract that include work for both. Now I'm going to print this change order PDF and give it to the owner to sign. This change order includes the change order amounts for both pending change orders. And then once the owner signs off on the change order and signs off on the change amount. I'm going to approve the sales contract. Approving because the owner has signed off on the change order. Approving the sales contract will create two subcontract to change order for me. So as you can see, previously we had one sales contract, and now it's creating two purchase orders for those two different types of work.
we had two rent two different vendors for those two different types of work. Therefore, two different purchase orders are being created. This is also how NetSuite handles the propagating effect of change orders, where um, it, it creates a subcontractor change order whenever I have a change order. So we just look we just looked at how uh, subcontractor change order get created from my change order. Now let's go back to the project dashboard and refresh the dashboard to see the effect of, of change orders on the project cost revenue. So I'm just going to refresh. And you can see that the three change orders we reviewed has been approved. And I'm just going to, I'm also going to refresh the cost side. You can, as you can see, after refreshing the cost side, the change order, <clears throat> the change order has been updated for cost. And you can also see I have added a highlight for cost overrun. It shows that for some of the sewage work, I had a cost overrun where my cost budget is more than my revenue budget. So I'm just going to refresh the revenue dashboard so you can see that clearly. My cost budget is around 62K, whereas my revenue budget for the same type of work is around 40K. And this highlight, and I define this highlight to give me early warning signs on the project because right now it's still at the start stage. I can make changes, uh, shift a few things while I can to ensure that the project is profitable. So this uh, this change order this both this change order column shows both internal and external change order, and it shows twenty seven thousand. Um, later on in the project, if I need more drill down, I can go to the change order cost section, and it shows me that the twenty seven thousand comes entirely from internal change orders. And this change order cost just gives a more granular breakdown in case I need to drill into where did most of my change order costs come from? Is it internal and or external? These highlights are really helpful because it gives me a clear indication of what type of work I'm I need to be more careful about and what type of work I'm fine. Uh, thankfully, none of the work has a negative cash. Both the cost overrun and negative cash highlight are completely customizable. I just defined a cost overrun to be cost budget more than the revenue budget, but you can define it however you want and you can have more than two highlights. This is uh, really customizable. We have also seen how the revenue side of the project costing got updated. This happens because of App Efficiency's material job costing solution. So the material job costing solution takes the transactions that's happening happening in NetSuite and then uh, updates the project as well as this dashboard based on the changes in the changes in the project. And this is really helpful for me as a project manager because it gives me transparency and um, visibility in how I'm doing on the cost side as well as project side. And because, uh, because these metrics can be updated on the fly, it can be updated daily, it can be updated daily or whatever I want. Um, it allows me to see in real time what are the changes and changes my project and make adjustments as soon as possible. In addition to giving me a clear view of the a clear view of how I'm doing in current project, once the project wraps up, um, I can also see a breakdown and breakdown of how I'm doing in cost and revenue for each of the work. And that allows me to be more profitable in, for future project that for, for future project. We're going to cover material job costing in the in the next webinar, where these metrics and reporting and costing will be covered in more detail. So stay in tuned. So we have just seen how change order affects 
a change order creates a subcontractor change order when the change order is subcontracted out. We have seen how change order affects the project budget for cost revenue and how uh, it's being updated in real time. Now, let's take a look at the billing side to see how change order affects project billing. To do that, I'm going to go back to the project and then um, view my progress billing. So I'm just going to open up on one of the work. As you can see, the schedule values is around 86K. That's because we have not yet updated progress billing yet. So I, I'm just going to update progress billing on the fly so that you see the changes. As you can see, the schedule value updated from 86K to 175K. That's because for this change orders, we group the change order under the same work code slash work type. That's why they uh, are grouped together in the, in the same schedule value. And this will uh, change the balance to finish as well as percent to com percent complete, as well as um, the billing side when we're generating invoice, because now we have uh, more work to be done for this electrical system. This isn't the only way to handle change orders. Sometimes we also create separate change order code to track change orders. Both are doable in NetSuite and in efficiency solution. It just depends on the customer and the project. So now let's take a look at summary billing uh, and see the change order being updated here. So we had a, an additional change order. And so the net change by change order should increase. As you can see, the net change by change order is also being updated. The net change includes the approved change order in previous month, as well as the approved change order in this month. And so this is how this is how the change order is updated in the summary of billing and progress billing when I'm invoicing the customer for the work done. So um, everyone, we, we took a look in this webinar, we took a look at the different kind of change orders and their effects. Their effect, we, we seen how it affects the subcontractor change order, how it affects the project budget and how it affects billing. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, over to you, Johnny, Marteza, and Hamid. Amazing. Thank you so much for that demo, Joyce. We will now be moving on to the Q&A portion of the webinar. So I will share my screen again. Awesome. All right. So as I mentioned, feel free to send over um, any outstanding questions that you may have in the chat, and we'll try our best to get to them within these next nine minutes. So the first question that we have gotten in the chat is, we've had some situations where we've had to terminate our contract with our subcontractor and hire someone else to complete the job. So they're wondering if our system can handle that. So Johnny, I'll let you take that question. Thanks, Clara. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, typically in, I know in some systems, this is a more uh, complicated process uh, in the NetSuite efficiency solution, it's really very simple. Uh, you can close out your PO, that'll immediately drop any further balance from going on to your uh, committed uh, costs in uh, on the job costs and job cost reporting. And then you can open up a net new PO for uh, your new sub, uh, your new sub that's going to take over the uh, take over the work or the new material order. Uh, so it's uh, it's an easy as that. I think sometimes if there are multiple uh, multiple versions of subcontractor activity happening and uh, people are afraid to close uh, POs or, or uh, uh, close out POs uh, after they've been partially vendor invoiced, uh, then that might turn off some folks from doing that. But from a NetSuite efficiency perspective, uh, it's a very simple process. Great. Thanks, Johnny. So we got another question um, sent over in the chat. Someone's wondering mm -hmm. how are employee hours handled when a change order occurs? So this is a big challenge of ours. The project planned hours need to increase. Does that just need to be updated manually? So I think um, it's a great question. And I think that 
this is part of what this webinar pointed to is that uh, good discipline, best practice, maybe not common practice, but best practice is to execute a new change order. And you can call it an owner approved change order in advance uh, and move it with, move through it that way. Add the hours to your uh, uh, to a change order that will increase your budget, your EAC, and give you the full visibility to what that version looked like. Um, if uh, and I see the chat question, um, if you just update it manually, then um, you know you'll what you'll see is an overage. Uh, when in reality, uh, there might be an actual change order supplementing it. The key thing that I think Joyce showed in her demo is that the system can easily highlight for you when you are either at an overage on a period basis or or on an overall budget basis, and that should give you enough clues and and controls to see that uh, you need to chase down the change order or um, get the uh, client to approve uh, the, um, the change order that you set up. Ho hopefully that answers the question. Amazing. Thanks for that response, Johnny. So we have another question in the chat as well. Um, they're wondering, does your system update the budget when we enter a proposed change order? If not, why and when will this happen? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, so uh, certainly when when the uh, change order uh, is updated, um, when the change order is approved, the budget will be updated. Uh, but uh, in a proposed change order situation where you're not there yet fully, it's absolutely normal to not have any impact on the overall budget of the project. Yet. You're not confirmed at that point and you should not be updating budget until you're in a firm position on the change order. Uh, it's funny because project managers will often put the pressure uh, on internal staff because they want to see the project not get disrupted in terms of its time and efforts and material flow. But the, 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 the right practice, um, is, of course, is that a proposed change order um, is really nothing but a potential agreement, very much like a prospect uh, decision. Um, you know, you don't really want to act on it until there's ink on paper. For sure. Thanks, Johnny. So Nikki did have a follow-up question to the initial question in the chat. So they're wondering, um, so creating the change order will update the planned hours on the project tasks. That's kind of their question. Mm -hmm. And they're explaining that that's where their staff is allocating their time and the planned hours is what gives the employees their budget. Yeah. So, so that's a great question. Um, and this is really very much a NetSuite specific question. NetSuite traditionally in the past, had planned hours move as you added hours uh, to the overall employee actual time. Uh, now, of course, you can you can the planned hours can stay the same, and yet but you have to update it manually. The efficiency solution goes a little bit beyond that. Um, so what will happen is is that all hours will be part of the change order in the initial budget, which is a separate record from uh, Netsuite's native time tracking. So you can have a additional layer of reporting on top of the native plan time reporting, which gives you this ability to then go through the full change order process and track it with the budget. So essentially what you're doing, um, if you're following the efficiency flow, is you would um, enter your change order, approve it, and then you just uh, maybe have an internal signal or some other workflow that tells the employee, go ahead and now you can start entering hours again. There's no need to update the task. The task is already tied to work code and the work code is already tied to the overall project schedule and schedule values. So in that situation where you're using the efficiency solution, no problem. In a native NetSuite solution where planned hours uh, need to be updated across multiple schedules, multiple periods, et cetera, uh, because of uh, a change to the project uh, overall commercials, you do have to do it manually. Great. Thanks for that clarification, Johnny. So I think we have time for one more. Um, and then if anyone has any further, we're happy to get to them um, later on. Just reach out to us. But our last question is, do change orders have a GL impact? I'll let you take yeah, that. So, yeah, so I'll, 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 why don't I wrap up here? So great question. Um, change orders absolutely uh, do not have a GL impact. It's the subsequent transactions and uh, effects of the change order that have the GL impact. So the estimate and the change order really can be seen as a budgetary exercise um, and a permission to execute regular transactions and the regular transactions, whether it's buying materials, 
whether it's invoicing the customer, uh, whether it's, um, you know, uh, writing down materials or uh, making uh, additional purchases, changing prices on your vendor sub contracts, all of those will impact GL, will have a GL impact um, once they become matured, approved transactions. Uh, but the order, the change order itself uh, does not. Amazing. Thank you so much, Johnny. So on that note, I think we'll end it here if we have no further questions. So I'd like to wrap up today by going over what is next in our construction webinar series. So please join us for our last two upcoming webinars within this series, uh, which will cover job costing as well as a customer success story. So our next one will be July 13th, as you can see, and that will cover the topic of job costing, which will really be the kind of accumulation and add up of all that we've discussed in these past couple of webinars. So definitely be on the lookout for the invite to that one. So with that, thank you all so much for joining. We'll be sure to send over the on-demand version um, as per usual, uh, but we hope to see you at the next webinar. Um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you again.